Well, I want to welcome everyone to this amazing opportunity for us to just uh, celebrate a life that meant so much, Flo Simmons. And uh, we're going to open in prayer, and I'm going to say a few things. Father, thank you today. Really pray that you bless this time. Bless the family, especially God, for uh, they need comfort. Uh, thank you that you are the Father and the God of all comfort. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Thank you. You give us all the comfort we need. So bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when I, I was thinking about Flo, I decided I want to wear my African shirt because um, to do this uh, opening prayer and remarks because she, it was amazing that she came to Africa and the way that she was there and singing and ministering to the body. And it was so much a part of our Ghana conventions. And... Uh, they, they really love her in Africa, too. She was such a, a person of great uh, depth and love and purpose and had a great heart for the work in Africa, and we're very thankful that, for that, you know. And when the, the group at one time called Seven, they would come over there, and they were really, like, uh, phenomenal. We have some old films of them, and they keep them in Africa. They won't give them away. So she was a, a, an amazing woman of God. And really, when you think about uh, women today, and even women of God, this one was exemplary. She was incredible. Uh, spiritual mind, uh, a heart that pursued God, loved her church, loved the leadership in the church, loved outreach, responded. And so uh, as we consider her life today, we consider a life that is a life based upon God himself, Zoe life, Zoe life in Flo Simmons, and that's amazing. We all have biological life, and all of that biological life, bios life, will end one day for all of us. But she had this incredible Zoe life that's eternal, and her life was an expression of that which is eternal, eternal in so many aspects. Her personal walk with God, her walk in the church, her walk in her family, her walk uh, of always having a desire to see people be saved and get to know God. So that was a walk with eternal life. And she walked that walk, and she's still walking it today because she's with Jesus in heaven. So uh, we just thank you. Thank, uh, thank God that he gave us this life for a period of time and that we could enjoy this life. And it's going to happen again because we're going to enjoy this life again with her. In Jesus' name, amen.
and greetings to everyone and I want to welcome you to this video presentation as we remember our dear friend and sister in the Lord Flo Simmons who just recently went home to be with her Savior and we are celebrating her life and of course under these uh, unprecedented circumstances with the virus sweeping across our country we are unable to have one of our face-to-face -face services here in our chapel although we wish very much we could just to honor her we know that the chapel would be uh, filled to capacity because she had so many dear friends and so many people who loved her so many people who were the gracious recipients of her ministry of friendship and wonderful ministry of song and worship and just the fact that she reached out to so many and loved them and listened to them and always had a word of encouragement for them. But again, under these circumstances, uh, we are just thrilled to be able to remember her this way through this video presentation. So, Father, we ask you to bless the thoughts that we'll share now as we remember our precious sister, Flo Simmons, and encourage our hearts with these thoughts. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for the promise of her being in your presence and she has now begun her real life in your presence. We ask that you would comfort her family members and her friends and all of those that, whose lives uh, she touched while she was with us. We're so grateful, Lord. We want to say thank you for giving us her as a gift and the impact that she's had upon all our lives. Bless now these thoughts in Christ's name. Amen. Well, the scripture reminds us to number our days. That's written in uh, Psalm 90, verse 12. Number our days. Interesting that it doesn't say that we should number our years. Uh, that's what we do. We celebrate birthdays. But God says uh, that we should become even more specific to the point where we should even number our days so that we can live our lives and apply wisdom to each one of those days. We all realize that we have a point in time when, well, we have an appointment, an appointment with death. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 says that. It is appointed unto every single person, every man, woman, that uh, they will meet God. And, of course, it says, and after this, there is the judgment. But there will be no judgment for Flo Simmons because she trusted Christ as her Savior. And the Bible clearly teaches that if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he bore our judgment on his own body when he hung on that cross at Calvary. She trusted in that salvation that God provided for her on the basis of faith and was the recipient of that by God's grace. So she will never come into judgment. In fact, the Bible says the moment we re receive Christ as our Savior in John 5, 24, we pass from death unto life, and we will never come into judgment. So the time of Flo's departure simply meant that she would enter into the presence of the God that loved her and that she, in turn, loved as well. But again, if we're wise, and of course she was, we will always remember the brevity of life. Uh, again, we can exercise, and uh, of course many do, and that can add a few more heartbeats to the measure of our lives. Medicine can uh, help us with a few more years, um, and we're grateful for that as well. But we know this, that in the end, there is an end. For all of us, nobody escapes this. Uh, there are some appointments as we make our way through life that we do miss. There's doctor's appointments and dental appointments and appointments with the children and appointments everywhere. Some of them we make, some of them we miss. But this one, when we leave this world, we will not miss it. God knows what time that is and what hour that is and what day that will be. Even the great psalmist David, after having slain Goliath, he couldn't sidestep the giant of death. He had to face it just as all of God's people do. So the good news is that we don't have to face death alone. David said in Psalm 23, as he wrote that Psalm under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that when he would face death, he had the assurance that God 
would be with him. You don't want to face death without facing God. You don't want to speak of death without first speaking to God. The Bible clearly teaches that there were some, and I know because I think I was in that company, who were subject and in bondage to the fear of death all their lifetime. The book of Hebrews, the second chapter, tells us. And then Christ came to deliver them from death, from the power of death, from the fear of death. Flo experienced that deliverance. She knew in her heart where she was going when she would leave this world. And God gives us the promise that he alone, no one else, can guide us through the valley of the shadow of death. And remember, it's only a shadow. Shadows don't hurt us. We can get beyond them, just as we'll get beyond the shadow of death into the presence of our new life, our real life with Christ. Jesus also teaches us that he's committed to getting us to that place called heaven safely. Years after one shepherd wrote Psalm 23, another shepherd, the good shepherd, the great shepherd of the sheep, Jesus, said in John's Gospel, chapter 14, said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm building a mansion for you. And if I go and pre prepare a place for you, I will doubtless come again and receive you myself. Think about that. Jesus said, I will come back and take you with me. That's his promise, his pledge to take us home. He's not going to delegate that task to anyone else. We know that throughout the history of the church, God sends missionaries to teach us and to proclaim the gospel, angels to protect us as we make our way and move through life, teachers and preachers to guide us, instruct us, physicians to heal us, but when it comes to going home and entering our eternal habitation, well, he's the one who promises to take us himself. He's personally responsible to take you and to lead you home. And because he does, we don't have to fear any evil. We don't have to worry or have any concerns that would trouble our souls. Jesus is our good shepherd. He's promised us to take us home. You know he's going to do it. I hope that if you're listening to this service, this tribute to our precious sister Flo Simmons, I know, given the fact that where she is at this present hour, that there is, would, nothing would mean more to her than for you if you haven't received Christ as your Savior. Ask him to come into your heart, to cleanse you of your sin, to give you the gift of eternal life. And you too will see flow again, just as so many of us are looking forward to. We're going to miss our dear friend Flo. We're going to miss her ministry that she had to us. She was so kind. She was so gentle. Always had the time to speak with you, to encourage you, to edify you. And of course, when she sang, oh, that was a real treat. That was a real blessing for us. Uh, we used to watch her get up sing her songs, and she sang with such a powerful anointing of the Spirit. And again, many of us will remember when the song came to a conclusion, those that would sing with her would have to kind of help her off the stage because she was so almost spiritually intoxicated with the presence of God. She just kept singing, kept worshiping. <laughs> they had to say, it's, it's time to stop. Well, praise God, now she's in the presence of her Savior and she doesn't have to stop. She doesn't have to stop singing. She doesn't have to stop worshiping. She doesn't have to stop with her adoration for her Savior. We're looking forward to seeing her again. We know there's going to be a great reunion in heaven. And it says about Abel in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews, it says that although he was dead, yet he still speaks. We have this confidence, this assurance in our hearts that Flo, being dead, Maybe we won't say it that she yet speaketh. We'll say that she still sings. And we look forward to hearing her once again in God's great choir. And we look forward to seeing her again, being reunited with her and all the saints so that we can together proclaim the glory of God. Thank you so much for this opportunity to pay our respects and to remember Flo. She was a precious saint. She'll be greatly missed. We look forward to seeing her again soon. 
God bless you. Flora Etta, affectionately known as Flo, was born on June 18, 1940, to Gilbert and Beatrice McLaughlin. She was the firstborn of 10 children. She attended school in Carthage, North Carolina, and graduated from Pinckney High School at the age of 16. She relocated to New York City the same year to live with her Aunt Bertha. She worked at Cushman's Bakery as a bookkeeper. It was there she met her future husband, Sylvester Franklin Simmons. They married one year later and had five children from that union. Sylvester Jr., Wanda, Brenda, Gilbert, and Cynthia, as well as Seal's daughter, Constance. Flora had a big heart and great love for children. When her sister Eloise passed in 1969, she willed her four children. Seal and Flora accepted this challenge and raised William, James, Cassandra, and Harold as their own. During these formidable years, Flo worked in different capacities, including working in the U.S. Post Office, cleaning houses, and as a paraprofessional, and subsequently as a teacher of special education for the City of New York at Public School 20. She always wanted to be a teacher and wanted to help the most challenged ones to learn. She was a faithful member of the New Canaan Baptist Church under Reverends Cunningham and Lawson. She sang with several church choirs and she was beloved by all. She regularly did foster care and subsequently raised several children in that system who consider her their mother or grandmother today. Isaac Glasper, Keith Horton, and James Horton. In 1990, after the death of her son James, she adopted her grandchildren, Eric Ross, Lamel Ross, Erica Simmons, and Darren Simmons, and raised them as her own. In total, she raised 17 children. She relocated to Baltimore, Maryland in 1992 with her grandchildren and started to attend Greater Grace World Outreach. She was very involved in the Greater Grace Learning Institute, singing with Seven and subsequently New Song of Greater Grace. She participated in multiple outreaches and was known for her powerful and anointed singing. Flo never performed, but sang as worship to the Lord only. Some of her signature songs are God Is, Caught Up, It's in Jesus, and Your Grace and Mercy. They will forever be engraved into the hearts of many who not only heard but felt God's anointing when those songs were sung. Many know and love her as Mama Flo or Grandma. Her love was boundless and unconditional. She was someone you could always talk to and tell your trials and trouble to, and knew she was truly listening and would give sound godly advice to help you along the way. Flo was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2016. She never wanted surgery, chemo, or radiation therapy. So the Lord mercifully allowed her to remain with us in relatively good health without any of those things until her departure. She fought the good fight and she kept the faith. There are not enough words that would adequately describe her amazing life and love. But Proverbs offer some thoughts. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. She girds her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. She was preceded in death by her husband, Sylvester Simmons, six siblings, Roy McLaughlin, Francis Quick, 
Yvonne McLaughlin, Alexander McLaughlin, James McLaughlin, Eloise McLaughlin, and five children. James McLaughlin, Gilbert Nelson Simmons, Brenda Lee Randolph, William Lamell Simmons, and Constance Smith. She leaves to continue on her siblings, Reverend Dalton McLaughlin, Michael McLaughlin, and Vivian Ann McLaughlin. Her children, Sylvester Jr. Simmons, Wanda Simmons Clements, Cynthia Simmons, William McLaughlin, Cassandra McLaughlin, Harold McLaughlin, Isaac Glasper, Eric Ross, Erica Simmons, and Darren Simmons, along with a whole host of grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, and spiritually adopted children, grandchildren, and friends. We love you, and we miss you. Oh!
the bereaved family. We honor, praise God, the church family. We honor the pastor, my sister. Praise be to God. We give honor to my brother and to my sister. We honor my aunt and we honor my uncle. We honor all our friends at this time. And God, we come just to say a few words about my sister. And I got a card that I felt that was fitting on today for me to read because that's how I felt the type of life she lived. The card said one step can start a journey. One song can change a moment. One smile can start a friendship. One cup can lift a soul. One candle can wipe out darkness. One life can make a difference. One word can start a prayer. One hope will lift a spirit. One touch can show that you care. And I like to think that that's how my sister lived her life. She started out one step on this journey. And I like to know that I went along this journey with her some 70 years of her journey. Though I don't remember the whole full journey, but from the age of five to six, I remember this journey. I remember my sister, my sister who was the one who took me to be vaccinated and to prepare me for the first train. It was my sister who thought that education was very important. And because of her, many have been educated. I thank God for her because she had to left such an impact to be able to say that she was a mother who raised 17 children. And each child had a different mind of their own. But yet she was able to find common grounds that she could come to each and every one that, and they really realized that she loved every one of them. I just want to say thank you for my sister. My sister who she and I had many journeys up and down the road traveling here and there. She was not just my sister. She was a friend. She was a friend that we could talk about anything. And I just want you to know that she was one who loved and she loved what she done. She said she wanted to be a teacher when she was 15 or 16 because she loved children. And she wanted to be an educator. And I come to tell you that God put her in a position to do just that. I thank God for it through, through the good times and through the bad times. But I just come to tell the family that you just got to hold on. You got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. And if you're feeling low, look to the hills which come at your help. Because all your help coming from the Lord. If you're feeling like you alone, remember that flow was always by your side. Remember no matter what you went through, it never stopped her from loving you. Every now and then, just fall on your knees and thank God. I can't tell the story in fullness, but I know she wanted to write a book. And if God gives me the strength, I will write the book for her. I raise my hand and say thank you. Amen and amen. Grandma was the most phenomenal woman I have ever met. Um, I cannot remember a time in my entire life that we have not been bosom buddies. She's one of the only people in the whole world that um, knows me, loves me, truly gets me, and never judges me. And that's just who she was. She loved everybody. Everybody loved her. Um, but she was my best friend. Um, and she has been for a very long time. And I'm grateful that the Most High allowed someone like her to to be in my family and to love me in my lifetime. She was royal, um, unconditionally loving, um, just so sweet and, and real. And I'm going to miss her tremendously, but she, her legacy definitely, definitely lives on. Okay, so my favorite moments with Grandma was when I was little and I had to go to her house. I had to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go to her house so I could go to school. She would always get me ready for school. She would let me take a bath and then she will give me breakfast and then she will let me sleep for a little bit longer. 
until I had to go to school. I had to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I had to be at school at 7 o'clock. So she'll rub my head, let me go to sleep and sing to me and stuff, and then I'll take a nap and go to school. And then she'll drop me off, and then my mom will pick me up. Those are my favorite moments with Grandma. Like, those are the favorite moments I will always remember. But yeah, I love you, Grandma. Fly high, and I miss you. Hey, Mama, I love you and I miss you. You're gone, but you'll never be forgotten. You'll always be in my heart. Love you. I just want to give honor to God, to the pastor, to my family, friends, loved ones. Um, it was an amazing and great privilege to be a daughter of Flora Simmons, an amazing, godly, spiritual woman who taught me many things. She taught me to love God. She taught me how to pray. Uh, she taught me how to love, how to sing, how to cook, and just how to have wisdom, how to forgive. She's invested so much in my life that I pray that I will do justice to what's been seated in my soul because of her. I love you, Mom. You're amazing. You've touched many lives in many different ways, and you will never be forgotten. And I thank you for that, and I love you. Hi, this is Pastor Steve Paragallo, and on behalf of myself and my wife, and um, I would like to express my deep appreciation to God and to her family and to the body for the life of a dear friend of mine, Flora Simmons. For 20 years, I've played the guitar in the Greater Grace Band, and uh, for 10, at least more years, I directed this group, New Song, of whom Flo sang. Thea and Terry are not in that picture, and they should be. But um, in all the time that we sang together and worked together, she would come over every Thursday night to our house for practice, and she was never negative. She was never cross. She was always positive and wonderful and had something nice to say, and she was a pleasure to be around, and we had a lot of fun. And as a member of the band and directing the group, I would make a lot of mistakes. It's something that would happen when you direct. And a lot of times we would finish a song and I would take it in another direction. And at the end of the song or the next day, I'd say, Flo, you know, I'm sorry I did this and I was supposed to go over here and I didn't. And she would say, no, 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 that was perfect. Um, I followed you. I just kept going. And, and that's what she would do. You know, she had that kind of spirit that she would cover people and not just um, hang you out there. She was just that type of person, um, never critical and very humble. Um, one time we had someone come to our practice who was a vocal coach and we had Flo sing. And when Flo was done, um, the lady just looked at Flo and said, that was perfect. I don't have anything to say about what you did. That was wonderful. She couldn't find anything wrong with her. She said that was amazing. And as good as Flo was, she never wanted to sing up on the stage solo by herself. She always told me, I don't want to go up there alone. I want to be with other people. I want to be with the body. I want to be with my friends. And that's that was her attitude, you know, that she was just a humble servant. Um, she told me that when she joined greater grace when she came to Baltimore she was looking for a church that she could pour out her whole life into and give everything and when she met greater grace she said I can do that here this is what God wants and that's what she did for many years that's the way she functioned and um, it says in Isaiah 57 that the righteous perish and no man lays it to heart and with Flo we need to lay it to heart that someone that godly and that wonderful who lived her life day by day before God, moment by moment, pouring out, was with us. And we had the privilege of serving and watching her life and seeing her fruit. And uh, we just want to express our, our comfort and love to her um, family and especially the grandkids and, and uh, Jackie, Darren, and Eric, Erica, Jasmine, James, and she's with Lamel right now. And just how Flo would sing a song and keep going at the end. 
she probably sang her way right into glory and said, the greatest one, the greatest one, the greatest one. And then she got in glory and went, the greatest one. And, and uh, she's up there having a great time, I'm sure. And uh, we sure are going to miss her. She's, she was the best. So love you guys. Hello, everyone. My name is Erica Simmons. My grandmother, my mother, is the best woman that I could ever ask for. She's an angel. She's She will always be an angel. She took me in. She took my brothers in. And she also took care of my children as well. You will always be remembered. Your legacy will always live on in me and my children. I love you, and I will always miss you. Thank you for every advice you gave me and thank you for everything you did for me and my family love you mommy think of Flo, we think of her, her spirit, her heart, her love for people, love for the church was amazing. 
Uh, I spend a little time, different times, with her, and she just was very, very sweet and very loving, very humble, very kind. I think she's the kind of believer that Jesus, uh, when he said the last shall be first, I think he's talking about people that are like her. Um, they are greatly honored by God. Uh, she sang, uh, and she would shout, shout out uh, during the song or at the end. Um, she had a relationship with Christ and, and knew it. She had a passion for Jesus and great love for her family, large family, uh, children, foster children that were her own. This was a, a, the mark of an amazing believer. Um, I'm so thankful that she, I could be part of her life, and um, and we'll miss her. A lot of people will miss her, and uh, her family very precious. Uh, so, um, as a tribute to her, we just want to recognize that we have discerned it we so we know it and uh, just want to recognize that with a few words today may god bless the family and then one day <laughs> what a day that will be that a, that will be an amazing day and that day is coming